Here we go with 9.3. This one is, we're making the transition from two-dimensional. So you've been working with rectangles and squares. And now we're going to a square-based prism. So we're going to take the same concepts that you just learned about in your investigations with two-dimensional rectangles uh, and move toward applying them to the surface area of a square-based prism, okay? So here we go. The boxes used in packaging come in many shapes and sizes. A package must be suitable for the product, it must be visually appealing, and it must be cost efficient. Many manufacturers and consumers are conscious of our environment and want to conserve materials whenever possible. What does that mean about the packaging for a cereal box or toilet paper or whatever? It's going to be paper. It's, it's going to be as, as small as possible, right? to minimize the surface area. Yes, it's also going to be made of recyclable material. Thanks very much. Uh, but we're going to try to minimize the surface area. So basically, we're going to try to make the smallest box possible that it will still fit in. But you've just learned that the smallest box uh, always isn't necessarily, or the biggest box, or the smallest box, isn't necessarily the exact shape that you think it's going to be. So we're going to make some things fit into these boxes. Uh, and I'm just going to give you some notes in that little <laughs> gap. So we needed to make a little connection between what we did uh, with our rectangles and what we're going to do now, okay? So, connection. Above 9.3 or below? Uh, un, uh, in the gap that you have in your worksheet. A rectangle with a given area so that means the area isn't going to change, but you need to determine the perimeter. A rectangle with a given area has a minimum perimeter when it is a square. You figured that out in lesson one for this unit, nine point or the whatever one we, yeah, 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 lesson one, I think. Okay? The same <coughs> concept applies when working with 3D objects. So what three-dimensional, which type of square-based prism is going to get you the greatest volume with the least surface area? Pyramid. Square-based prism. A pyramid is not a prism. So square-based prism is something that looks like... A rectangular prism? Is this one going to be the best option? Yes. Or is something like this going to be the best option? Or yes. something like this is going to be the best option. Or does it all depend on the packaging? Uh, I think the first the one, because that looks like okay. a cereal box. Okay, so listen. No matter what I'm packaging, look at, the, look at what we're saying. With a given area. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the cereal that I need to pack, it's going to fit perfectly in this box. It's going to fit perfectly in this box. It's going to fit perfectly in this box. I want to choose the option that's going to use the least amount of cardboard. Square. Why do you think it's a square? Because I drew it small by accident? No, I think Why the square? Because it's all equal. Remember, Plus it says... Plus, they also got to worry about packaging, too, when they pick a cereal box. Like so what it looks like? Yeah. No, yeah, and how to pack it up nice and tight. When you well, I just explained to you that everything that I need to pack will fit perfectly in this. The same amount will fit perfectly in this, and the same amount will fit perfectly in this. Okay. This square. Super tall. Okay. Pause. Read this, please. Read this sentence. They all are equal. No, they're not. Yeah, and that longer is annoying to put in the cupboard. Okay, because the same concept applies. When working with 3D objects, as you already learned about rectangles, that with the least amount of fencing, the biggest area that you can cover is a square shape. The same concept applies here. The, if the volume is set, the same amount of cereal in each box, it's all tightly fitting, 
you're going to use the least amount of cardboard for your box if you use the square. Okay, a square-based prism, and it's going to be, what's a, what's a square-based prism with all sides are squares? It's a cube, okay? Good job. So we're going to use a cube. Uh, we're going to finish that note. A cube has less surface area. A cube has less surface area than a different square based prism with the same volume. What does that mean? That means if you drew three square based prisms, so this one is a square based prism, this one is a square based prism, and this one is a square based prism, if you drew three square based prism or a million square based prisms, the one and they all had the exact same volume. So if you did length times width times height here, you'd get the same as here, you'd get the same as here. This one, the cube, will use the least amount of surface area. Okay, that makes sense? Excellent. Let's head into example one. Cardboard box dimensions. The pop -lot Popcorn Company ships kernels of popcorn to movie theaters in large cardboard boxes with a volume of 500,000 cubic centimeters. Okay, I'm just jotting down the information that I have. Determine the dimensions of the square-based prism box to the nearest tenth of a centimeter that will require the least amount of cardboard. Okay, so what are we looking for here? What kind of box are we going to square? We're, we're, a, square a, cube. a cube. We're going to be in a cube box, okay? So here we go. Square based prism. Uh, a, a. Never mind, we already wrote that. So it's going to be a cube. We're going to write the formula for the volume of a cube is. V equals S cubed, right? The volume is just length times width times height, but length times width times height are all the same. It's just one side times itself three times. S cubed. Where S is the side of the cube. Does it matter which side I take for S? No. Nope, they're all the same. Good. So, sub five hundred thousand for V. Here we go. We know V equals five hundred thousand, and we know V equals S cubed. So I sub five hundred thousand uh, in for V, and I get five hundred thousand equals s cubed. Okay, now this is a little bit of a tricky thing. You probably haven't seen this before. You know how if this was s squared, what would I do to get the answer? I take the square root of both sides, okay? But it's not s squared, it's s cubed. So I actually need to take what's called the cube root of both sides. Okay. I'm going to explain to you what that means. Okay. The cube of a number means that there exists a number, we'll call it number A, where three of them multiplied together equals our answer. Okay, so what we're saying is that there is a number that we could take and multiply by itself three times, A times A times A, to get 500,000. That's different than if it were squared. We'd be saying that there exists a number a times a to get 500,000. We're not doing squared, we're doing cubed. So we need to find a number that if we multiply it by itself three times, we'll get 500,000. Now, I don't know if your calculators have that button. Is it like the I got one with an X? Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so you have figured out how to find the cube root of something on your little calculators. That's fantastic. And what did you find out s is equal to then? How could you test to see if that's actually the right answer? 
Five times multiply three. it by three. three. Just use your calculator, hit 79. Not, no. Don't multiply it by three. We that will not by it itself by three times. So go 79.4 times 79.4 times 79.4, enter. Okay, and you'll get 500,000. Perfect. So the side length of this is approximately 79.4 uh, what? Oh, are we oh, no, no, just, centimeters. just centimeters? We're just talking about a side length. Exactly okay, yes. so finish it off yeah. with a sentence yeah. to use the I least did, did amount yes. of cardboard, comma, the box should be a cube. With sides of seventy nine point four centimeters. B. B says, please read with me, find the amount of cardboard required to make this box to the nearest tenth of a square meter. Describe any assumptions you've made. So, first, let's calculate uh, how would we find out the volume. Sorry, the uh, amount of cardboard needed to actually make this box. The volume, isn't it? Two legs. We're looking for surface area now, right? The amount of cardboard will be surface area. And all the side lengths are 79.4? How many faces are on a cube? Six faces, are they all the same? Yes. Okay, so the surface area of the cube is six times the area of one face. What's the area of one face? 79.4. No, that's just the length of a side. Oh, times width. Find out length times width. No. Sure, what's length times width? 6,304. What's length times width? 6,000. What's length times width? 79.4 Okay, good. So do I have to, do we have to write length times width? No. no. What's the area of a square? Side, side times side. side, which is S squared. Square. Square. Thank you very much. That took too long. Okay, here you go. Surface area of a cube is six times the area of one face. The area of the face is just side squared. So all you need to do is plug in what you know about the side length, which is 79.4, square that, multiply it by 6, and you'll get the surface area. 37826. And what units are we in if we're talking about surface area? Meters. Centimeters. Surface area? Cube. Surface area? Squared. Area? Area? Square. Put up your hand if you think it's just centimeters. Put up your hand if you think it's centimeters squared. Put up your hand if you think it's centimeters cubed. Put up your hand if you didn't put up your hand earlier. It's it's squared. I, I never area. Squared. Area is always squared. Okay? It's uh it's two dimensional. So it's gonna have second degree. How do you draw three okay, cubes? did we answer the question? Read the question again and see if we answered it. We figured out the surface area of the cube, not how much cardboard. Oh, That's yeah. the same thing? Yeah. Okay, so we figured it out. Read the question, see if we answered it. Read the question, see if we answered it. Yes, we did. No, we did not. Describe it. You have to write, you have to write a full sentence. To the nearest of the tenth square. Tenth meter. what? Meter. Tenth square so meter. Ha! I figured it out. We are currently in centimeters. Okay, pay attention really quickly. If you had a square meter, okay, this is one meter along this length, one meter here, one meter here, one meter here. How many centimeters would it take you to get from here to here? From here to here. How many centimeters are in one meter? No, there's not. There's a hundred centimeters in a meter. Okay, how many centimeters in this meter? One hundred. 
So if we were to divide this thing up into all of its grid of centimeters, how many cubic centimeters, sorry, how many square centimeters would be in here? How do you find out area? 100 times 100. 10,000 square centimeters equals one square meter. Okay, so that means we need to take our surface area 3.8 meters of 38,000 and divide it by 1,000, sorry, 10,000. Divide it by 10,000. 3.8. And you get 3.8 meters squared. Okay? It would take, oh. sentence, it would take 3.8 meters squared of cardboard to make this box. Okay, what assumptions are we, uh, what do you know about boxes and packaging that makes this, you know, this is kind of a good example, but kind of it might not even be true. Like when you get a cardboard cereal box, is it li the only cardboard on there is the exact amount that it takes to go around no, it no, once? No, it's more. It's more. They overlap it. They overlap it some places with flaps and things like that. So the assumption is that it doesn't, you're not including the calculation of those flaps and things like that. Okay. Okay, example two. We want to minimize heat loss in this situation. So let's say you are uh, delivering pizza and you know how they have those like oven bags, those insulated bags, okay? The tighter the insulated bag, the better because what happens if it's bigger than the pizza, you've increased surface area and you actually lose heat through the surface area, right? Where there's no... So if you were to increase the volume, which would increase the surface area, so if there's extra space in the bag, that means there's wasted surface area. It means you're losing more heat than you need to. Okay, let's read. Tyler has been asked to design an insulated square-based prism container to transport hot food. When hot food is placed in the container, it loses heat through the container's sides, top, and bottom. So to keep the heat loss to a minimum, the total surface area must be minimized. So in A, we want to find the interior dimensions of the container with a volume of 145,000 centimeters cubed. So we're looking at a, a, a box of some sort, square-based, yep, sorry, there you go, a square-based prism. Uh, just quickly draw just any old prism to give us something to look at. And it's got a square base, so this here is a square at the bottom. And we want to make it so that it has an interior volume, so just the volume inside it, is 145,000 cubic centimeters. And we want to have minimum heat loss, which means we want to minimize the surface area, okay? Uh, what shape are we going to use? Cube. We're going to use a cube, right? Because a cube has the greatest area with the smallest surface area. Now, what are we assuming if we're going to say, oh, we're for sure going to use a cube? We need to use the formula. Yeah, but what are we assuming about the food that he's it's delivering? Very, uh, it fits good in a cube, right? Whatever it is, it fits good in a cube. So it's probably not a pizza unless it's like 10 pizzas stacked up. That would make a cube. But here we go. Uh, round dimensions to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So to minimize heat loss, Tyler's going to find the optimal surface area with this volume, and so we're going to build a cube, which means we're going to use the formula for the volume of a cube, which is V equals S cubed. What do we already know? It's V is 145,000. Excellent. We already know the volume. How do I solve this? You have to uh, square uh, the cube like root. Everyone say cube root. Cube. cube root. Excellent. Okay. You can get the fourth root or the fifth root or the sixth root of things. It just means that there's that many factors that multiply to get the answer. Thirty-five point five 
32 point or 35.6 I got 30, I got 32.5. Are you sure? 52.5. Yeah. Well, let's 52. see. 52.5. 140. Okay. I got 52 decimal 5. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. 52.5 centimeters, and it's a side length, so it's just one degree. Another way to think about this, guys, how I knew that it goes from centimeters cubed down to just centimeters is well you actually are taking the cube root of the units as well so if you took the cube root of centimeter cubed you just have centimeter okay good so to minimize heat loss the container the container should be a cube notice how in all my answers I'm writing a cube with side length 52 and a half centimeters. Wouldn't that be actually like a decently sized container? 52 centimeters is more than half a meter, yep. So you like that? Have you ever done skip the dishes? Like is that what they come in? And B. Oh, they come in baggies and they come in the table. Let's finish up here guys. What other factors might Tyler consider? So what else should he think about? The food that he's transporting. Okay, so a container should be container should be same shape as food. Vacuum sealer. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's not get into how he could make it better that way, but how else could he make it better just by thinking about the shape of something? Like he's delivering food. What else does he need to think a about? Smaller surface area. So that's what he's done with the cube. Okay, so there's no, another no, no. thing kind of oh, like oh, vacuum no, sealing. Oh, it has to be like stackable so mm. that you can. Stackable. Yeah. Stackable. Like, because know. the smaller the smaller the container, the more you can transport. You must be able to so contain food. What about like easy to carry? And sturdy enough so if you have like on your sturdy. Sturdy. Yeah. Easy to carry, sturdy, like as in balance. Yeah. yeah, so like a shorter, flatter thing would be less likely to spill mm -hmm. than a cube. All right, you've done very well. Uh, it also needs to be, his packaging needs to be visually appealing, right? Good, and that's it for today. So go ahead and start your practice problems. Uh, they are there for you in your booklet as well. Enjoy.